Hey you guys, it's your girl T and it's time for another recap of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. We watched it this Sunday and I think this Sunday's show was just, I don't know, I really wasn't feeling it, but I still want to recap it for you guys. So let's go ahead and get this recap started. So in the opening scene, we start with Phaedra and her mom and they're meeting outside of a restaurant. And basically Phaedra's mom is asking Phaedra, has she seen Apollo and she heard from Apollo? And Phaedra tells her mom about how Apollo showed up at the club at Demetrius' party to talk to her about their marriage. And Phaedra felt like it was totally inappropriate and that was not the right place to talk to her at and the mom said that she's been hearing all types of rumors and she doesn't understand why Apollo's not doing what he's supposed to do you know what I'm saying why he's out why he's not spending time with the kids and once again Phaedra gets on this whole oh woe is me poor Miss Phaedra this just came out of left field you know she starts on that whole pity party and I refuse to throw Phaedra Parks a pity party she says that basically, you know, she gave Apollo so many opportunities to have a legitimate job. She tried to bring him on to her front row business. She tried to do the work on DVD with him. So he had a lot of options. And she says she's tired of Apollo blaming her because Apollo felt like he did a lot of this dirt to keep it with Phaedra and to keep Phaedra living the lifestyle that she had grown accustomed to. And Phaedra was saying, you know what, he didn't have to do any of that for me. He knew from jump I was the breadwinner. I just needed him to do the right thing. If he couldn't deal with dealing with a successful a black woman then he should have got a female who worked at the Waffle House now when she said that that kind of kind of irritated me because my thing is you're no better than nobody you know what I'm saying I don't care if you're a high-powered attorney if you're a funeral director just because somebody works in fast food does not mean that you have the right to demean them or act like you're way up here and they're way down here because I know a lot of chicks who don't work at the Waffle House who would not look at an ex-convict twice let alone marry him and then get knocked up by him. So that's why I said I don't feel bad for her. But like Cynthia said last week, oops, bitch, your slip is showing. You know what I'm saying? Fader's just as hood as the rest of them. She's just as hood as any other hood chick. She just tries to put on airs. I like how she tried to throw shade at regular fast food workers and restaurant workers. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, she's no better than nobody else. At the end of the day, you chose him. You chose to get knocked up by him and you chose to marry him. So don't be mad at nobody else but yourself. Moving on to the next thing. So in the next thing, we had Nene Leakes, and she comes in looking like a big-ass football player. She has on some netted jersey. I think it's part of the Nene, I'm not going to buy that shit clothing line. She's meeting up with Portia, and then she throws some shade, and she tells the waitress that she's looking for a woman with a whole head full of weed. And then she's like, oh, you must be talking about Portia. She's right over here. So, they take, so then she takes Nene to the table, and so they start talking. And you can tell Portia and Nene's friendship... To me, it just comes off as fake and forced. It's almost like Nene really don't have nobody else to hang with now that she doesn't have Cynthia up her ass. And, you know, Portia doesn't really have a peach, so people are kind of standoffish from her. So it seems like her and Nene have been trying to hang out. So they start talking about everything that went down at the restaurant. And Nene feels like, you know, she still wants to meet up with Cynthia and try and make amends. And she feels like, you know, maybe Portia should try and talk to, you know, Kenya as well. And Portia's adamant she doesn't want to have anything to do with meeting with Kenya. She says she's fine in the space where she's at right now. So Nene said that she's going to reach out to Cynthia and try and set up some type of meeting. So that way her and Cynthia can talk and finish hashing out everything. Moving on to the next So scene. the next thing we have Candy Burris. And Candy is chilling with the old lady gang, her aunt Nora, her mom and her aunt Bertha and when I tell you these women are a straight up mess so Candy's over there they're all having dinner and everything else and Candy is saying and Candy's saying that her um, ticket sales for a mother's love has not been popping like that and that she's thinking about bringing the old lady gang in on it you know have them come maybe perform some lines maybe do a duet because I guess her aunties used to sing back in the day now Aunt Nora's all for it but Mama Joyce and Aunt Bertha looking at her like, bitch, no, okay? We don't want to have nothing to do with your production. We're cool. It is not that serious. I'm too old to be traveling around the country. So they automatically did that issue. So then Candy starts talking to her mom about how, and so then Candy starts talking about how Mama Joyce won't give her a key to her house. And Mama Joyce is like, well, I don't have a key to your house, so why should you have a key to my house? And you know, what I find funny about the whole situation is that Mama Joyce is, <laughs> aneurysm is not bothering her today i'm like bitch last week you couldn't see your head was hurting you didn't know what was going on but today you're as fit as an ox and you're ready to snap back you know mama joyce is such a trip so you know she's telling candy that she doesn't want candy to have a key to her house even though candy paid for this seven bedroom house she just feels like you know the home should be for her and her boyfriend and if she has to ring candy's doorbell candy should have to ring hers and then i know it's like you know what you're really lucky mama joyce i wish somebody would buy me a house translation candy i'm your favorite auntie i'm gonna need you to hook me up <laughs> so the old lady gang they're a straight trip so um 
Then Aunt Nora asks Candy, how was her trip to New York? Did she get a chance to see Mama Sharon? And Candy's like, yeah, I got to see her, but, you know, didn't really go too well. You know, Mama Sharon thinks that my mom should apologize. And Mama Joyce was like, I'm not apologizing for nothing. And Candy steadily laughing with that dry ass laugh, like, <laughs> well, I think you should apologize. And, <laughs> and Mama Joyce is like, nah. And then Candy proceeds to tell Mama Joyce that Mama Sharon said that when she sees Mama Joyce, she's going to punch her in the mouth. And so Mama Joyce is like, what? Mama Joyce and I'm Bertha are looking at Candy like, what? She ain't about to punch shit. She ain't about to punch nobody. And then Candy's like, well, you know, I, you know, she's just really upset. She just wants an apology. And Mama Joyce is like, nah, she wants a top mess. She better bring the cabbage. So Candy's like, what the hell is a cabbage? And I'm Bertha goes, she better not step to us with all head and no ass. I'm like, these old ladies are a straight up trip. Candy has really irritated me this season. She was one of my favorites on the show, but she's definitely gone down a few knots because she just has like a really, I just feel like she likes to throw rocks and hide her hands. You know what I'm saying? That comment was not needed. Even if Mama Sharon said that, she knows damn well that Mama Sharon said that comment in anger. You know, everything don't need to be repeated. Everything does not need to be said to your mother. Some things you can just wait until the show comes out. You know what I'm saying? I felt like she instigated that just because it was funny or just to get a reaction out of her mom. I feel like she likes playing both sides of the fence with Todd and her mom. And the whole situation is just sickening to me. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Claudia. And Claudia is going to the airport to go pick up her mother and her grandmother. So we finally get to meet Claudia's white Italian mother. And Claudia and her mom look just alike. I mean, they have like the same features, the same smile. They look just alike. And her grandmother is there. And her grandmother is 91 years years old when I tell you honey black don't crack because that lady looked like she was in her 70s but she was in her 90s I'm not gonna lie and I'm not throwing no shade but she reminded me of Bill Cosby with a wig on because she said something in the car about how you know a lot of women down south are big because they like to eat 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 and the way she said it she sounded like Bill Cosby and I'm talking about this old woman was full of life she had all types of jokes. I'm like, Claudia's grandmother is a trip. She needs her own damn show. So Claudia's mother is very, very conservative. She's very, very reserved. Claudia's grandmother is loud, boisterous. You know what I'm saying? She's off the hook. You can't tell this old woman nothing. And we also found out that Claudia is 41 years old. And I was really surprised to hear that because I thought like, because I had assumed Claudia was about 37, 38. But Claudia looks damn good for her age. She does not look like she's in her 40s at all. So Claudia decides to take her mother and her grandmother um, to this restaurant. And it's a restaurant. I guess full of drag queens and stuff like that and the drag queens serve you so it was really really cool so they get there and they're ordering dinner and stuff like that and she's asking her grandma all these crazy questions like has a female ever hit on you and her grandma's like I'm strictly dickly you know what I mean so her grandma was a trip and then she talks to her mom um, you know she tells her grandmother and her mom that she loves that she loves them but her mom doesn't say anything back and she goes mom you've never told me that you love me and her mom is like you know you know, that's just not what I do. I don't say I love you. You know I love you by my actions. And I, I definitely understand where Claudia's coming from. You know, like I said before, sometimes when you have parents that are immigrants and they're not like, you know, American parents, um, they don't tend to say that they love you. They don't tend to show you a lot of affection. They show it to you physically by keeping the lights on and, you know what I'm saying, um, giving you food and stuff like that, you know, paying for your clothes. They feel like that's showing love. They're not really verbal with it because I didn't hear a bunch of I love yous growing up. Nobody told me that they love me. You know what I'm saying? I had to tell myself that as I got older. So I definitely understand where Clyde is coming from with that. And then I also understand her mom's point of view because some people are just not verbally affectionate. It's just more in their actions. So I definitely see both parts. But it does hurt because sometimes you do just want to hear, you know, I love you or I'm proud of you or, you know, job well done. But, you know, everybody parents differently. And at the end of the day, her mom obviously did something right because Claudia turned out to be a pretty great girl. Her mama did something right. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Kenya and Brandon. Kenya had met with Roger Bob. So now she's, in so now she's determined to get her own office space and they go office and they go office space hunting okay so they're gonna go look for a business for Kenya Moore what type of business she's trying to run I have no idea supposedly some type of media company so she's taking Brandon with her and while they're in the middle of touring the facility her phone rings and it's Cynthia and Cynthia is saying that Nene called her to basically invite her to go out to um to go out to eat and that she wants Kenya to come and Kenya's like well that's kind of weird you know why do I need to come when you and her haven't even really resolved Joss issues I think only you two guys should be meeting up and Cynthia's like well she didn't ask me to ask you she said bring Kenya she wants you to be there so Kenya just please come finally reluctantly 
Kenya decides to accompany Cynthia to go meet up with Nene. Moving on to the so next So the next scene. thing we got Todd and Candy. Candy's in her office and she's kind of stressed out because the numbers are not looking right. They're not selling enough tickets. Todd walks in the room to keep her company. And Todd's like, you know, what's wrong, baby? How come you're not smiling? Are you pregnant? And, you know, Candy starts laughing. She's like, no, I'm just kind of stressed out because these tickets aren't selling. You know, everything is just, you know, a trip. And I'm trying to, you know, bring my mother and my aunties together. I'm thinking if I can get the old lady gang together, then possibly, you know, that might help the ticket sales. And Todd's like, well, I don't know about that. I don't know if I really want to be on the road with not only your mom, but your two aunties for a long time. So then Candy decides to tell Todd that basically she told her mother um, everything that Mama Sharon said. So Todd's, you know, just sitting there listening. And she was, and so Todd was like, what did your mom say? And Candy tells Todd that my mom says that she's not going to apologize. She doesn't feel like she did anything wrong. And Todd is like, well, you know what? There you go. There you have it. Your mom never thinks she's wrong. And then Candy goes, I also told my mom that your mom wants to punch her in the face. And now Todd's looking at her like, bitch, is you crazy? And Candy just does not understand, like, how foul that was. You know, Todd is like, and she's like, well, your mama told me to tell my mama. And Todd's like, okay, so it doesn't matter if my mom told you to tell her. You know, common sense should tell you that if you say something like that, that's going to make the situation a lot worse. You know, I don't understand how Candy can't see this. And I don't understand how Candy gets so defensive when Todd defends his mother. You know what I'm saying? It's funny that she can sit with her aunties and her mom and Kiki and laugh at mama. Sharon you know what I'm saying that she could buck up to mama Sharon anytime mama Sharon says something about her mama but then as soon as Todd tries to defend his mom she feels some type of way so Todd is like you know what I'm about to just be the bigger person when it comes to these holidays like Thanksgiving Christmas I'll just spend my holidays in New York with my mother and then you know you can spend it here with your mom and Candy does not like the idea that she's like you know I feel like you're trying to break up you know this makes no sense to me why would you not want to spend you know the holidays as a family and Todd's like, well, I'm not trying to make my mother uncomfortable. I'm not trying to make my mother worry. You know what I mean? And your mother has no intention of apologizing. She's very rude. And I don't want to put my mom in that situation. You know, and I definitely feel Todd on that. And the sad part is that Mama Sharon is dead. And Todd is not going to be able to spend any more holidays with Mama Sharon. You know, and I really hope that all this stuff that's playing out on camera did not affect them during the holidays in real life. You know, as far as Todd and Mama Sharon, because this would have been her last holidays with Todd. You know, so this is just really, really sad and unfortunate. You know, I feel like if Candy does not watch out, she will be heading for a divorce. You know what I mean? Her mother has been married three different times. So it just seems like Candy's following in her mother's footsteps. If I were Candy, I would stop instigating. I would stop running back and forth between the mothers. She needs to get her mom to apologize and to make her mom understand how much it would mean to her if she would apologize to Mama Sharon. But if, you know, if Mama Joyce refuses to apologize, then Candy needs to check her mom. And then let Todd know that she checked her mom and then leave it at that. But I just find the whole situation just disgusting how she's constantly playing games between Todd and Mama Joyce. It makes no sense whatsoever. Moving on to the next So scene. last and final scene, we had Nene and Cynthia. And um, so they're coming into the restaurant. They're saying hi to each other. And then Kenya walks in and then Portia walks in as well. So now all four ladies are together. And I guess Kenya feels some type of way because she had to travel really, really far to the tavern. And Nene's like, you know what? Don't throw shade. It don't matter. The vodka downtown is the same as the vodka way out here. It's not like you don't shop at the outlets. So they're steadily, you know, just kind of throwing shade at each other, throwing shots at each other. So that whole situation is a mess. You know, I just didn't like this luncheon. I just thought it was fake as hell. I don't understand why Nene put this together. She had no intentions of making amends with Cynthia. You know, and even when, you know, Cynthia was trying to say her piece, Nene was still trying to cut her off. Nene was still trying to, you know, talk down to her. And Kenya kept cutting in and saying, you know, well, no, Nene you need to listen to her and listen to what she has to say because we all know Cynthia is not a confrontational person so I did respect Kenya for having her back and you know kind of you know checking Nene a bit like you know what Nene you need to calm down and let her speak her mind you know she's not confrontational she's not confrontational let her tell you where she's coming from you know but the whole time Nene just had this really shitty arrogant attitude and on top of that she says that she would never have lunch with uh, Cynthia in any time soon Cynthia's like well we don't have to meet for lunch you know next week but what do you mean you would never have lunch with me again and she said well it's just going to be too hard for me to get over you know everything that went down between us it's going to take a long time for that to heal up and I'm like Nene's just so full of shit this woman is just an ice queen you know and I feel like she just did this shit on purpose I'm going to need her and her damn wig to have several days 
damn seats. I don't understand, like, I just don't understand her personality. I don't understand why she brought all these women together when she knew deep down inside she wasn't really trying to make amends with nobody. And then, um, so then Kenya excuses herself. She goes to the bathroom. Nene tells her to go to the men's room. You know, Nene's just over the top. So then Portia and Cynthia start talking about their non-existent beef. You know, they're, they're not talking over a, a time thing. So to me, that whole situation was stupid. Nene decides to walk off. Nene and Kenya decide to walk back in the scene. Portia and Cynthia are still talking and going at it. So then, you know, as they're talking and getting, you know, they're going at it, they're getting louder. So Kenya is interrupting them and she's saying, you know, Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. And Nene's also interrupting them as well and she's saying, Portia. And finally, Nene's like, Portia, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what y'all are arguing about. You and Cynthia, it's not making no sense to me. You know what I'm saying? Can y'all stop going back and forth? Then Portia turns around and she's like, if that mother effing bitch over there wouldn't stop being so loud... And I'm sitting there like, what? Like, why is she snapping and cussing at Kenya? Kenya didn't cuss at you. Why she got to be all types of bitches and motherfuckers? You know what I'm saying? I didn't understand where Portia was coming from with that. Especially being that Nene was being interruptive too. Nene kept calling Portia's name the same way Kenya was calling Cynthia's name. But yet and still, Portia didn't snap on Nene. You know, I don't, I just, I'm not feeling Portia at all this season. I'm not feeling Portia at all. And if Kenya would have talked to Portia like that, folks would have been going off on Kenya and dragging Kenya. But it seems like people let Portia get away with all types of bullshit, like she's only 15 or some shit instead of a grown woman. Portia had no business cussing at Kenya like that. Portia had no business talking to her like that at all. I feel like Portia has done a whole 180 since coming on the show. When she first came on the show, she was very humble. She was very down to earth. She was all about her husband. And then soon she got a divorce. She went and got breast implants. You know, she's just doing so much extra stuff. And it just seems like she's just really over the top with her personality. It's like she's really trying to stay relevant. And it's just coming off as a bad look. I still don't understand who the real Portia is. Minute she's like this super Christian pastor, you know, preaching the word of God. Then the next minute, you know what I'm saying, she got implants. She's taking all these sexy, risque pictures. You know, so her whole attitude has flipped. It's like reality TV has really changed Portia and it hasn't changed her for the better i cannot stand her character anymore she comes off as nasty and childish after she cusses out kenya kenya decides to be the bigger person and walk over there and ask portia to hug her and i'm thinking to myself kenya's just doing this for camera time because kenya has no storyline either you know what i'm saying i'm surprised that kenya didn't pull her hair or hit her in the face for yelling at her and cussing at her for no damn reason but kenya does decide to be the bigger person and she walks over there and she hugs portia and you know they kind of make up but the whole thing was just fake the whole meeting to me was just a waste of time I like this episode at all it was drawn out it was boring and then that whole reconciliation luncheon that Nene put together was straight up bullshit. So anyways, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. What did you think about this week's episode? And if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you follow me. I'm at LovelyT and I'm LovelyT2002 on Instagram. Alright, deuces.